How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be talking about a Mercedes Benz that I was working on recently. Had the engine M271 model W204. So that's the 1.8 liter engine in those Mercs. Presented with uh, engine light on and long crank time, but this job gets a lot more involved as we go. So I decided I would break this up into a set of different videos. I think there's a lot of information in this repair that I do on how you do certain parts of this job that's not out there as it is. And I thought it would be very useful if I created a playlist specifically for this job so that anybody that runs into this issue, whether it's a technician or a DIY enthusiast, will have all the information there for them. So without further ado, let's crack into the initial fault that happened when this vehicle presented. So first of all, the initial fault that showed up in the workshop a couple of months ago when it presented came in, it had a long crank time when the engine was cold. So for three to five seconds, it would be swinging before it would start. And sometimes it may not start on that first initial swing. With that, it also had an intermittent rattle and I set about and I pull the fault code off the ECU. Fault code on this was P0340-62, which is related to the intake camshaft cylinder bank one has an electrical fault signal comparison faulty. So with that fault code along with the long crank time and also the rattle that I heard as well, I did advise that I suspected it was a timing related issue to the customer. Of course, to confirm this diagnosis, we're going to keep the vehicle for longer, do some further checks, but the customer did advise they needed the vehicle for work. This was on a Saturday originally and the the drivability of the vehicle was perfect when, um, when it got up and running. So it was only that initial cold start and then afterwards the car was driving perfect. So the vehicle was taken away and for one reason or another, a couple of weeks later, it ended up in the dealership. They were then asked to check over that fault and see what they thought. They advised that they felt it was an electrical fault and um, the customer gave the go ahead to do the work that they had recommended. That work consisted of what I believe, believe loom repairs. So the wiring loom that goes down to the camshaft uh, adjusters that picks up the signal. I believe they've done some work on that. Unfortunately for the customer, he was advised to go away. Everything was uh, fixed, but on the next cold start, the vehicle again had the exact same problem come back. So after that check with the dealership, we were contacted again and I went back over the initial examination that I had with the customer, just double back over that I suspected was timing related, would need to go into further investigation. Again, the customer wasn't overly concerned about it, so it was let stretch a little bit further. A couple more weeks pass and then there is running issues to coincide with the um, cold start. That's when the vehicle gets brought into the workshop and I get the full clearance to go and diagnose it. Now, the first thing I wanna do is check the timing. So what I do is remove the rocker cover, remove all the attaching components so I can visibly see mechanically where the timing is lining up. I'm not looking for electrical signals, I'm looking for mechanical marks to confirm where the camshafts versus the camshaft adjusters on the exhaust intake to the crankshaft are lining up. That's what I want to check. I also want to check to see if the chain is stretched or worn, if there's a tensioner failure, if there's a guide failure, all of these items that can happen to throw a timing out. You want to get in, mechanically check and see what's going on.
And if you look at the mark here, the arrow here, you can see that this is out. This one here, there, and there. With that said, when I got in and removed all the components, I was able to visibly see that the timing was out. The timing on the intake side, that cam adjuster on that side was out massively. And you can hear in this clip here, the clicking that happens when you go to turn over the engine as well. So knowing after that check that you can see that the intake cam adjuster is completely out, you're always going to recommend replacing the exhaust one as well. The exhaust has done the exact same mileage as the intake one and when you're in doing such an involved job, you're not going to be risking the other one to go out at the same time. So the recommendations was the chain, the tensioner and the adjusters to be replaced. The customer gave us the go ahead to do it and then we had to wait for parts to go ahead and get the job done. Now I can confirm with them repairs the P0340-62 fault had been completely cleared. What did happen when that vehicle came in was it came back in with a list of faults um, that wasn't present the first time. So it did have misfire related codes as well and it wasn't just that one code which showed up in the first instance. The work with the timing chain, the adjusters and all that. So the timing chain in these is a very different setup than what you get, might get in other vehicles. It needs to be delinked, so you need to remove the old one and separate it and then link it with the new one and rotate the engine round. So it is quite an involved job just to do the timing chain in it. It requires specialist tools to not only remove but refit um, the correct way. Of course you could remove a chain uh, with some type of force but you're going to risk um, doing damage and parts potentially falling into the timing case when you're doing that. But I'm going to be showing you in detail how you remove this chain and also how you, using special tools that I have here. The likes of this tool here, which is the time and chain link separator. Um, I'm going to be showing you how you can use one of these and this tool here which presses on the new link. So it's like I said, there's not a lot of information out there on how you do this job, how you uh, de-link the chain and how you put it back together again. It is, like I said, a, quite a difficult job, not something you're going to come across every day. And I think that information is very useful to a lot of people out there that want to either do this job themselves or technicians that have never done this job before. So I will be, like I said, making multiple videos on this topic. So this is the intake camshaft adjuster. This is the item that had failed. 
I'm also going to be stripping this down and seeing if I can see any noticeable failures within it as to why it failed. Uh, I suspect there is some damage internally here which is causing it not to be able to hold and um, when you seen in the earlier clip when it rotates over and it's not staying in the um, in the timing marks it's full it's falling over so in here will be um, an adjustment movement so you're going to have an area which is capable of advancing and that area I suspect has an, a failure inside in it and um, that should be very visible hopefully that I will also show in a later video. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this initial breakdown on this video. It's going to get a lot more involved. We're going to talk about the timing setup. We're going to talk about how you disassemble and reassemble the chain. You're also going to see in real time me doing it in the workshop. I'm going to show you some close ups of the chain being delinked and repressed on in the workshop here as well, because I can get some really close uh, close up images and make it as clear as possible so you can see exactly what's going on with that. Now if you are getting involved in the timing of one of these you are going to need some specialist tools. It's unavoidable uh, to do a professional job. There is some um, lockers that goes on the camshafts that you need. It holds them in position and um, you're also going to need a thin 32 mil and um, the actual uh, Torx head to remove this, which is a, sec a security type, is a T100. So you need all of them items to be able to do this job successfully and uh, I'll go through all of them as well in a later video. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. I hope you stay tuned if you're interested in how this repair went. Be sure to comment down below if you have any questions or if you'd like to see any specific things in this job that I may not include in a later video. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.